Hey guys, how's it going? Just wanted to show you how I troubleshot my thermocouple in my water heater. Uh, if your water heater assembly looks like this one, which I know a lot of them do, the newer um, enclosed combustion chamber, this is what they're going to look like. Um, you can use this technique to uh, uh, troubleshoot the thermocouple if you'd like. Um, the way I'm doing it, you have to remove it. There are other ways of troubleshooting this using the pilot light. So first of all, the issue that I was having is that my pilot light would light, but it wouldn't stay lit. All right, doing a little bit of research, it sounded like there was an issue either with the controller or with the thermocouple. All right, so let's take a second and figure out what we're looking at here. On your water heater, you'll have your controller. Okay, this controller is what uh, controls, as in the name, uh, everything that's going on in the combustion chamber here. This controller is hooked up to a bunch of wires, a couple of different wires. It's also hooked up to your main gas line for the main burner and your pilot light gas line for the pilot light that's down here, the pilot flame, if you will, okay? Uh, you have the thermocouple, like we said before, okay? You also have an ambient temperature sensor here. This one is going to sense the temperature while this, actually at all times it's sensing the temperature, but it's supposed to let the controller know if there's an overheat of the burner. And then lastly, you have a small, you have a small, uh, uh, component here that provides a spark for the pilot light. If your pilot light goes out, you can start it, and this spark pro provides the uh, the flame or the the ignition. You can see here if I press the little ignition, you should see a spark. Yep, there it is. That's all you need to start it. All right. Now we know what everything is. So to test this, we need to understand the circuitry. Here is the plug for um, your your sensors. So all of your temperature sensors plug in here. This one right here is simply for the starter I just showed you. So we can negate this. We're not going to use this at all. And I'm just going to remove it right here for now just to get it out of the way. Okay, let me get these other ones out of the way too. All right, so all we're left with is two wires. Very simple stuff. So let's follow these wires real quick. From the controller, this white wire here goes down through a splice and then right down here into the combustion, cha combustion chamber. It then follows a shield, or it goes into the shield, and if we follow this shield, that you can see right here, if we follow this shield, and you'll have to just trust me, it goes right here to your thermocouple, okay? That's your thermocouple right there. All right, so out of your, that's your wire going into your thermocouple. Coming out of your thermocouple, actually it doesn't matter which wire is which, in or out, but, the other wire going to your thermocouple is this red wire. And what you can do is you can follow this back and look here, and you can see that there's a red wire coming out of the combustion chamber as well, right? So if we follow this red wire, oh, excuse me, along through here, you can see it goes to the ambient temperature sensor. I made the mistake of thinking this was the thermocouple when it was when this whole assembly was still installed. All right, so don't mess with that. Um, this uh, is in series with the thermocouple, right? Which means that if this gives you any problems, it doesn't matter what reading the thermocouple gives you, this will still tell the controller, no, you're not allowed to turn on any gas. So uh, just keep that in mind for later. We're not going to talk about that too much. But uh, if you look here, and then we have a red wire, it's going straight to the controller. So in order to test the thermocouple, we need to get rid, circuitry-wise, we need to get rid of this guy uh, right here. So we're going to take this wire off the side, this red wire here, we're going to take the connector off the controller. All right. We're going to take our multimeter. Hopefully you got one of these. You're, they're pretty cheap if you just run to your uh, home store. They're pretty cheap. We're going to take this and we're going to go into the white wire. So the white wire is on the right there. Just like, sorry, trying to do this with one hand. All right, so that's now in the white wire. Okay, we're going to take the other lead of our multimeter. We're going to put it right here into this red wire. There we go. All right. So now, if we come over to our, I'll turn it off, multimeter, uh, the manual says you should get 300 millivolts of DC power from this. However, mine's not working, hence why it's out. Um, so we're not going to do that. But uh, if yours was working, you could change this right here. Uh, if you have a manual, Oh, man, excuse me. Uh, if you have a manual um, multimeter setting, range setting, you'll want to go probably to the lowest one. Uh, 
so I would want to go down here. Uh, that's 200, so we'd want to go to 2 volts uh, in order to get it 300 millivolts. But anyway, uh, so you'd want to go to the lowest one here, one of these two, to get your 300 millivolts. That's as you're applying a flame to the thermocouple, okay? Mine's not working, so we're going to go over here to ohms. And ohms is a measure of resistance, okay? And this is going to tell us whether or not a path uh, is... There's an electrical path going through the... the uh, thermocouple. So I'm not a uh, appliance guy, but I am an aircraft uh, electrician, and I will tell you that this is exactly how fire suppression, not excuse me, fire detection systems uh, work on aircraft. So what we're going to do to test this is we're going to apply a flame to this thermocouple as we have it hooked up like we do, okay? And we're going to see if this changes. So in this particular case, we got pretty good continuity. The lower the number, the better, the easy it is, easier it is for electricity to make it through the circuit. So let's see what happens. We should see some sort of change. So I'm going to take my torch here. Don't need a lot. Doesn't need to be crazy hot. I just so happen to have a torch. So, so we're going to take our torch and we're going to apply it right here to our thermocouple and watch our numbers. You see our number is growing. All right. Growing, 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 growing. Just leave it on there for, oh, overload. Now, overload means it's the same as cutting a wire, right? It means that the wire was cut pretty much. So in my particular case, this thermocouple is bad. There's something going on inside of it that's causing it to open, the circuit to open, which is bad, um, as it heats up, right? And what that's doing is it's telling, it's telling this controller, hey, something weird's going on because what I'm providing you is just off the wall, off the charts. So this controller would not let me keep the pilot light lit because it could not confirm that the pilot light was on, okay? So if we stood here and we waited as this cooled down, it'll drop back into a readable range again, okay? And it doesn't matter where we go. Oh, there it is, it's back. There it is, it's back. So as you can see, it's dropping as this is cooling down. It's very cold in my basement right now. Um, so it's dropping pretty quick. Uh, I ended up getting a new water heater. You can get uh, a kit to replace this, um, but I ended up getting a whole new water heater uh, just because it was nine years old and uh, I didn't want to take the chance of, you know, it was really pretty cheap, only 425 bucks to replace the water heater. So um, hopefully this helps you guys out. Uh, you can do the same thing if you want to test this. You can do the same thing with your pilot light uh, without pulling this entire um, assembly out. With everything still hooked up, take one side off right here. Take uh, your connector off of your switch. Do exactly what you're doing here and use the pilot light. So you light your pilot light. Use your pilot light in place of my torch, okay? And that way you can leave it inside of the inside of the uh, uh, water heater if you want. But um, I would look for voltage that 300 millivolts. Um, if you look at your, just look at your. Uh, owner's manual and one of the last pages is it tells you exactly what you're looking for uh, with the setup like we're doing right here so uh, you could also use uh, resistance like we are here ohms the omega symbol so hopefully that helps you guys out um, that's what happened to mine had an open so uh, thanks for watching and we'll uh, hopefully have some more videos like this as I come across them